Okay, so things have really, really changed when it comes to search engine optimization. And in 2020, I think we're gonna see the biggest changes yet. In fact, I'm gonna go over some of those today. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the perfect search engine optimization checklist for 2020. I've got some amazing things for you to consider for your on-page optimization that are definitely gonna help you rank better and get you to that coveted number one spot that you want in Google. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Before you get started, make sure to click the notification bell and make sure to subscribe so that you can get more videos like this in the future. Okay, so the biggest change is the first one. So the first thing is that now you need to think about not only the search, but you also need to think about the intent. So the number one thing is search plus intent when it comes to search engine optimization. So when you're looking at a keyword now, you don't just look at the keyword, you wanna think about what's the intent of the user. So what are they actually searching for around that term? Are they searching for a news article? Are they searching for a how-to? Are they searching for a video? Are they looking for a SERP feature? Are they looking for an image? Or are they looking for a definition, right? These are all different types of content that they are looking for inside of Google that are not just an article anymore. So you need to dictate your entire on-page SEO checklist around whichever type of content that you are creating. So figure out the keyword, match it to the intent of the user, that's gonna go a long way. So that's item number one. Make sure you do a thorough, thorough review of Google. Item number two, you want to make sure that the keyword that you select and match to the intent is, and the content that you create as a result of that is better than the number one ranking item in Google. So whatever the number one ranking item in Google, you're gonna look at one, two, and three, digest those, figure out what's going well, what's not going well, and then the content that you create and the outline that you create for that content needs to be better than whatever is number one. Otherwise, you don't really have a chance to get that number one spot, right? Item number three, general on-page optimization still matters, right? And usually when you do a, a search for something like SEO checklist, you're gonna get a list of general on-page optimization elements like the following. So title, description, H1, H2, copy, image file name, image alt text, image caption, video, video sitemap, video schema, right? These things still matter. So whatever type of content you decide that you need to make, you still wanna make sure that you work the keyword into these general on-page elements. Those still matter. So you want your keyword to be in your title, in the description, the H1, H2, and so on and so forth. Also, you wanna review the competitive analysis from that other type of content that you're modeling off of and make sure you look at that and make yours better, make it more exciting. You know, the most important things are really those titles and those descriptions and any additional features that you can create in Google because that's what gets you those extra clicks. In addition to that, one really important thing to keep in mind when it comes to your headings for H1s and H2s, if you want to show up inside of voice search, you want to create a rich result and then that comes up in, in voice search when somebody does a search on their phone using their voice. It's a really good idea to make it so that that heading is a question and there's a direct answer right underneath it or direct bullet points underneath it. Five or six bullet points or you're going to have text that is 50 to 70 characters. That's what really creates those rich results which then can in turn turn into voice responses. There's also more things that you can do with schema. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. And then in addition to that, you really need to be ranking on the first page to even have a chance for that, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's get into item number four. Item number four, reviews. Really great to have on the page, especially if you're a directory site, a local site, generating reviews adds fresh content over time and it can make you rank higher, especially if those reviews are relevant to the content on the page and the service being offered. Comments. Comments are great to have for your on-page SEO and your on-page optimization, but don't let them get out of control. No curse words, no grammar, no spelling errors. They need to be highly relevant quality comments that add quality to the page. FAQ. 
FAQs are really big. They increase conversion rates, and especially because they answer the questions that the people have directly on the page. And when Google sees them and crawls them, they really, really like that. You can also mark that up with FAQ schema, which is a really powerful thing, because it'll make it so that it'll create the questions that you're answering actually in the search results. And when somebody clicks on it, it'll create a dropdown that shows the answers right in the search results. So that's gonna give you some more real estate. Number seven, if you have facts on the page, make sure they're 100% up to date. No 2018, no 2017, no 2015. If you're in 2020, if you're in 21, for your on-page SEO checklist, you wanna make sure that you've got facts up to date. Also, you need to look at EAT, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Really, really important, and it's now a super big part of Google's algorithm. So I've done whole other videos on this that you can find on the YouTube channel, but briefly, making sure that you've got an author profile, you've got dates associated with your blog posts, and you're citing all of your references are just a few of the things that are really, really important. But if you look at Google's Quality Rater guidelines, they go on and on about expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, and how that specifically relates to all of these different types of content that they have in Google. If you actually go in the Quality Rater guidelines, you're gonna see that they've mapped out all different types of content around intent, and that can be really, really powerful also to look at when you're creating your content. Hub pages, it's really, really important to build up hubs of content around your most important terms. So if you've got a really important term that you're going after, you wanna make sure that you're listing important things like blogs, videos, articles, you know, guides, making that the biggest resource possible all around one area on your site that then shows Google that's the main authority area. It links out to all these other areas and simultaneously all these other areas also link back to this main hub showing Google that's the number one page on the site for that term. Number 10, schema. I talked about this a little bit, but schema is more important than ever. So for your on-page SEO checklist, you're gonna want to think of organization schema, FAQ schema, review schema, local schema. Make sure you schema that page out as much as possible because Google's looking at that more and more and they're using that now to pull things into the Google Assistant and to pull things into Google SERP features in some cases. Not in all cases, but in many. Number 11, page speed. Really, really important. And now in Google Search Console, they even have a page speed report that tells you exactly what's wrong and you can click a button and validate all the fixes in there. But page speed, it didn't used to be such a big deal. Now it's a pretty important ranking factor. So for your on-page SEO, you really want to make sure that you have fast page speed. Okay, number 12, mobile testing tool. You need to make sure that your page is 100% mobile ready, right? It needs to pass the validation. If you just Google Google mobile testing tool, you'll be able to run your page through that and see if it passes. And then number 13, you're gonna want to do a fetches Google bot in Google Search Console and make sure that the page validates and make sure that everything can be picked up, especially if you're heavy in Ajax or JavaScript. In a lot of cases, Ajax and JavaScript websites are really tough for Google to crawl. They can't find all the content. So you wanna make sure that all of that can be indexable. Number 14, run your page through a server header checker and make sure that it's returning a 200 OK. That means that Google can index the page and there's no issues with it. If you see anything else, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you fix that. Number 15, do a robots TXT test and make sure that page is not blocked inside of your robots TXT file. So inside of Google Search Console, you can drop a page in there and you can see if that page is blocked by your robots TXT. It'll tell you if it's blocked or not. It's a really good thing just to make sure there's no issues with it getting indexed. Number 16, you wanna check the code for rel canonicals or no indexes. A rel canonical will tell Google, rank this other page that I'm pointing to, not this page if you're pointing to a different one. And if there's a no index, Google can't index the page at all. So those are two things that you wanna make sure you validate. In addition to that, open graph tags for Facebook and in general, open graph tags also work with Twitter and they also work with Pinterest should also be in your code. So you wanna make sure that you have open graph tags as well for images, titles, descriptions, that's gonna allow things to be pulled into Facebook. And also while I'm talking about that, 
that image, that big image is really, really important for every page as well if you wanna show up inside of Google Discover now. So make sure you've got a big image on that page that's properly formatted for Google Discover if it's an article. Number 17, you wanna search for your content online. So this is really, really important. So just grab a little piece of text, right? And then put it in quotes and do a search in Google. And what you might find is a bunch of people have stolen your content. So especially if your page of content is not ranking as well anymore and you do a search and you see it's been stolen, that could be one reason why it's not. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to deal with that. You can do a digital millennium copyright act request and you can submit um, web spam, you know, reports as well to Google. But in general, you know what, you want to check and make sure people aren't stealing your stuff. It happens all the time. Also for number 17, cannibalization is really, really important for your on-page SEO checklist. So when it comes to cannibalization, what can happen is if you do a search for some content on one of your pages and a whole bunch of other pages show up, or if you do a search for your brand name and then a term and you see a whole bunch of other pages show up, you could be cannibalizing your rankings. What that means is that you've got too many pages trying to fight for the same term. So do a search for your brand name and a keyword if multiple pages show up and they're they're all kind of fighting for it, what you want to do is drop those into SEMrush or some other ranking tool, figure out which one's ranking the best, and then redirect those other pages to the page that's ranking the best so it can rank the highest. Number 18, check for a manual action. So if you go inside a Google Search Console, you can click a button and you can see if you have a penalty. That's a good thing to check for just to make sure that you know there's nothing holding back your ranking. Number 19, check the Google URL removal tool. Make sure nobody has removed that URL and it can still rank inside of Google. And then number 20, you wanna make sure you set up some reporting, right? So there's a couple different ways to do this. One would be set up your main keywords inside of a tool like SEMrush so you can always check the visibility index associated with that page. So how visible those keywords are as far as their ranking position when they're all joined together. And then in addition to that, you can set up a filter and a shortcut inside of Google Analytics so that you can consistently track that page or a group of pages that you've optimized as well. Also, I wanted to make one point here. Don't forget to monitor backlinks because that's really, really important. You know, with all the kind of spammy links that are coming in nowadays, you know, you want to make sure that you don't just only think about on-page optimization. You want to make sure you think about everything and that whole other side, which is, of course, the off-page optimization. And then two other quick points. When it comes to local, this changes just a little bit. There's a different focus for how you would set things up with conversion rate optimization, obviously. But in addition to that, you know, you want to have more local elements such as a map. So check out the other video I did on local SEO. That'll give you a really good idea of how to do on-page SEO from a local perspective. And if you want to learn about e-commerce and e-commerce SEO and what an on-page SEO checklist looks like for e-commerce, go ahead and check out the e-commerce SEO video that I did as well. That's it. I hope you really like this one. If you learned something today or if you, you know, just in general, you know, got something out of this, I'd love to hear about it. Make sure to leave a comment. If you have any questions about how to set up the perfect on-page optimization, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.